Hey everyone, welcome back to another video with me. I'm Nikki and if you're just joining me, I help you make things for your friends and family. For the rest of you, I'm glad you're back. So thank you for coming back. Let's get started with today's project. You already know what it is. Okay, let's get to sewing. All right. So the first thing we are going to do to get started with this, you'll see that um, we're going to, you can use it for a few different things, which we'll talk about as we are creating this. All right, find everything you need on the blog in down below in the link. Make sure you check it. First thing we're going to start off with is that long piece of fabric. Okay, we want to get it ready so that we can create our uh, closure here. So we're going to fold them fold the raw edges in to meet each other, creating one giant tab, folding them over, raw edges meet, we want to get them folded in to meet that middle line, you don't have to press hard, that's just a guideline. A guide marker that you can use so that you know where to fold your fabric into. I tend to use this method for a lot of things so some of you you already know that if you're a returning subscriber. I love how simple it is to make these but versatile. Last but not least, we're at the end of this. Okay, so now we want to sew right down on both sides. We want to sew um, all the way across on both ends, about one eighth of an inch to close this up. going to take the end of this and I want to just fold it under so that um, we can get a pretty side to the end of this tab without having to turn it inside out. <laughs> Anything that's too thin I do not like to have to turn it inside out. Make sure you backstitch and I'm just going to help use my use my pen to help me push it through. Okay. You can use anything to push it through. Okay. Strike this. <laughs> Take care of that later. <laughs> so we have our raw edge right on this side. Okay, let's go ahead and put that to the side. You can pick up these two small um, pocket pieces here. I'm using, instead of using a regular inner fabric, um, instead of using an, a regular fabric for the inside of my pocket, which I'll show you right here, I used um, something that I got from the craft section. I'll show it to you. I've had... I've had it for a while. Um, I tend to go in the craft section and I love to pick things up on clearance. 
Um, originally, I had the idea to use this for um, zipper pouches for like the beach, you know, put wet stuff inside. Listen, I thought it was gonna be 25 cents because it was on clearance. I actually got it for 10 cents when I got up there and I bought a bunch of them and I was like, I'm definitely taking this home. <laughs> so um, that's what I'm actually using um, inside. So you don't always have to use fabric. You can use um, some other durable material. And this is actually pretty strong. It's sold in the utility section, um, in the utility section of um, the fabric shop. So I'm going to put pretty side to pretty side. And all I want to do is go right around one eighth of an inch um, to secure this. You know what? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna change that. Okay. Um, okay, what part? Um, okay, that I'm using. Okay, so pretty side to pretty side. What we're going to do is sew straight across um, the longer edge. I love the way it sews as well. It doesn't get caught in the machine. Um, it was just very comfortable to, to work with. I'm going to open this up so we can flatten this up. I want to turn this so that we get it right side facing out. We want to flatten this. And we want to put a top stitch right across the top so that we make it look good right across the top. So top stitching one eighth of an inch. One eighth of an inch. Okay, so we have our pocket piece that's just about ready for us. What we're going to do is just get it ready. Let's place it onto um, the lining piece that you have for the organizer. Okay, what I did here, um, if you got the directions off the blog, um, what I did was I just cut a regular rectangle and then I curved the edges on both the top and the bottom. You could leave it um, straight if you want to, leave it like a regular rectangle. This being round is totally optional. Okay, I just decided to play a little bit with curves and see if I like that. I'm going to pin this in place. And we're going to base stitch just around the edges, right around, okay? And I'm stitching one eighth of an inch. The idea is that I just wanna secure it to the lining so I don't have to use pins because I stick myself all the time. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to remove those pins and we want to help this, um, we want to help our curves to come out um, a little bit smoother. Anytime you're sewing curves, you want to just snip around those curves to help remove the bulk. Okay, doing this side. Okay. 
why are they not snipping <laughs> today? Here we go. Be careful not to cut through your stitches. Okay, so we have cut edges, cut circles, semicircles. All right. Well, what we want to do at this time, we want to prep um, for this portion of the project. Now, I wanted to just see how it looked when I made the original, um, when I made these original tabs here. I wanted to see what it looks like, you know, if it made a difference to me with the design of the pouch. And then I realized I sort of like the way it looks, having fabric like that. Um, but I wanted the flexibility if I didn't want to take chargers. When I travel, I use a lot of different chargers. Um, but I wanted the flexibility to be able to use it for something else as well, um, if I wanted to. So I'm going to use some elastic as well as tabs. I'll show you how to do both and then you can decide um, how you want to use it for your own purpose. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. We can start off with the two tab pieces that you have. Let's create, um, let's create the tab for that. That's gonna be very simple as folding it over. And what we wanna do is sew across, um, straight across the bottom of one side and all the way across. Make sure you leave the opposite end open. We're going to do that for both pieces. I was deciding how wide I wanted it. When you're working on tabs, the width as well as the length, it's really completely optional. Um, you will decide what is right for you based upon your project. Okay. So don't get hung up on worrying about what size the tabs are. Um, it's just something that you do to suit your needs. Also, when you're placing your, your tabs, because if you want to use, <laughs> if you want to use this for um, makeup brushes, well, you won't need it, you know, you won't, the spacing will be different than what you need if you're planning on making one for a gentleman that needs, that wants to put razors, okay? Okay, using my chopstick. And I'm going to poke it in the bottom of this. Just poke it at the bottom so I can push it through. Poke those corners. Yeah, so my husband travels a lot for work and, you know, he can pack his razors um, in the pocket or in a zipper pouch that he uses, you know, but the idea is um, think about who it's for, how many tabs you need, or elastic, and then, you know, come up with some creative solutions. You could even use this for pens if you want to make, I'll show you the elastic when we get to that part. I'm going to top stitch these because I don't like to um, not have anything top stitched. It just looks so professional and like a finished product. So I'm going to top stitch um, right around the tab, around the three sides. Don't worry about that, um, the raw edge.
This will be um, this will be something you can do with matching um, using the same fabric to make a matching travel set. <laughs> okay, so here um. <laughs> So here are my um, finished tabs right there. And this is the time that you want to decide where you want to um, place them um, according to your needs. Again, what I did here was I put two of them um, um, inside of this project and use the Velcro here, round um, dotted Velcro, um, and then use the elastic. Um, so I think I'm going to, I'll put these at, I'll just put them in the middle. I'll put these in the middle. <laughs> I'll put them in the middle here. Okay, so what we want to do is, um, this is the portion that is going to fold, okay? So you want to make sure you do not put the tabs down here because whatever you put there will be in the way for when you fold it, right? Okay, so I'm going to place it um, here in the middle. And what we're going to do is put a stitch down to baste it down to hold it in place. Okay. All right, and so that's good i like that and then i'm going to randomly i'll choose i'll move it over here a little bit um okay yeah place these wherever you want to you don't need a specific measurement from the left or right side um not for this I'm just back stitching to secure it. Okay. All right. Ah. Because of course I don't use my automatic cutter. That would just be too easy, right? All right. Okay. Let's prepare the Velcro for this okay teeny tiny little pieces okay i have a long strip of velcro and i just cut off um the tips of some okay all right let's see we want to i want to sew this on all right so i'm going to put it right here on the edge with the idea that it's going to connect okay All right, I'm going to, okay, sew around the edges. I don't wanna use the sticky Velcro because you will get the sticky Velcro um, or hook and loop, whatever you, whatever you call it. You'll get it stuck in your needle and then you'll have to change your needle. So you don't want to um, have to worry about gummy stuff. So use the sew on. Now, if you're concerned about the color of the thread, normally I change the color of my thread, which I have it right here. I had every intention on doing that, but, <laughs> but I did it. Okay. Um, on the right side of your product. Okay. Meaning look at this. My right side is great. It's great. That's how I want it. Right? Because that's the material that I'm using. Uh, I got to cut off my long <laughs> strand, but, um, on the inside, if you don't want to see the thread with your Velcro, then switch your bobbin color, um, switch your top color so that you don't see it, okay? I'm okay with that being like that for now, all right? What we wanna do here, what I like to do is, 
I placed the Velcro on so I can get an idea of where I want it to be. And that works for me. So we're going to sew this on. Yeah, change the color of your thread if that's an issue for you. But using the sticky Velcro, the problem with that is that this will get a lot of wear and tear from, it's something that you would use often and you don't want it to come up every single time you um, open and close your product. Okay. Yeah, so, and I'm normally very, I normally would change that color, but um, it's fine for now. It'll drive me crazy, but. <laughs> All right, we're going, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the next one. Okay, let's see. Yep, so I'm going to add this on. And I'm just going right around the edges. And I actually, um, I'm lowering, I lowered my stitch length because it helps to um, have tighter stitches when you have smaller things or items that you're going, flaps or tabs that will be lifted a lot. Smaller um, stitch lengths, they secure a lot better than longer stitch lengths. It's very tedious with small pieces. If you want to, if you want to, you could also do these tabs with some snaps. Um, I actually have some here for another project. Um, I didn't want to put them on here, but you know, these snaps here, you could actually, um, you know, do this project so that you open and close this with snaps. So that's another idea for you. Okay, use whatever closure you want. That's why you sell, right? For creativity. Where's my other piece? Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yep, do what works for you. Um, plugs are a big thing when traveling now. Sometimes, you know, the USBs are universal. But um, I know... We'll get a lot of use out of this. Okay. The funny thing is that when you're not traveling by plane and you're road tripping, you take a lot of items with you, more obviously than you would take if you were flying. <laughs> And so we load up. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, so I'm not worried about the stragglies on the back because we won't see it. All right. And now um, the elastic. Okay. So since I didn't change my elastic, um, since I didn't change my elastic for the, I mean my thread color for the elastic, I'm definitely going to change it for the elastic. <laughs> All right. All right. And so... <laughs> Ah, here we go. Because I just feel I don't want to see the gray through the elastic. 
real life sewing guys real life sewing that white that um elastic that velcro color on the top is gonna drive me crazy but it's okay <laughs> All right, so I'm going to strategically place these same way so that if I do something like this, um, whether, you know, my husband will use it for a razor or if I'm going to use it for makeup brushes, the idea is that I can put um, whatever I want to in different directions. Okay? Um, yeah. So, all right. So I'm going to, um, I made this one a little longer because I was thinking about putting um, two sep three separate sections, but I'll see. The idea is just secure it at the end. Give yourself a little bit, um, don't stretch it, okay? Just sew it as it is because you want it to naturally be able to stretch when you put the item inside of it. Um, but as many sections as you want to sew, go ahead. I'm going to secure it on the end. Let's see. Do -do 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 -do. All right. As you guys know, I'm not a professional. <laughs> All right. And I went over it. I backstitched a few times. Give it that little bit of extra love. I will cut off this straggly and I'm going to see I'm not stretching it I'm just um, moving over take your time so that you stay on the on the elastic itself and again I lowered my stitch length I'm going to make it one a little bigger. Yeah. All right. You definitely want to use coordinating thread um, when doing your elastic. <laughs> I mean, we're not. <laughs> okay. That one's there. Where's my other? Here it is. And again, let's see. When it's closed up, I'm just, um, I'm, I would just randomly. I was thinking about using my Cricut to um, put some schnazzy saying on this, but my daughter thinks that's cheesy. All right, and one more section. I sew so many things um, uh, for myself and you know my husband will be happy that I'm actually I actually made him something <laughs> okay so that's what we have right now go ahead and grab the tab um, you have an option if you want to. If you want to, you can put interface uh, interfacing on the back of this. I am only going to put one on one side, which is on the main panel, because I want it to have the flexibility to close, open and close, and not be stiff. And this is great, the texture of this. So go ahead and grab that... Um, tab that you that we've created okay and what we want to do is baste stitch it on okay hold it in place I'm going to sew it on 
What? That's not the middle. Oh, so you know what we should do? Hold on, since we're going to, since I've got to stop anyway, now that that. Let's fold this in half so that um, we can find out where the middle of this is. Okay, we want to put our strap on. I'm just finger pressing that. Okay, and I want to get the um, middle of the tab. Do I think you need to uh, fold it? Well, you know. <laughs> okay, so it's placed right in the middle. Let's base this on. I'm just going to lift it up so we have a little bit of raw edge there. Let's base this on. So now that's right in the middle. That's the closure. So for those of you that have seen my videos before, um, you know I don't normally like raw edges, right? Let's do something. Let's go back over here, which I did not do with my sample here that I was working on. Let's do something. Let's flatten this down. Let me get my straggly from right here. <laughs> All right, let's put a top stitch right across, very close at the seam there. <laughs> because when you open it, you'll see a raw edge. I'm going to bump up my stitch. Okay. And now we don't have to see the raw edge. Now it just looks like a pretty little, <laughs> it just looks like a pretty little tab, okay, like this. So when you open it, it looks nice and clean there. You guys, use coordinating thread for your elastic piece. <laughs> I'm going to flatten this right here for this one as well. I'm going to do the same thing. All right. And back stitch. And now we have a pretty edge underneath. All right. Let's see. All right, now we have a pretty, see that? I have to cut that little straggly. Okay. There we go. We have a little bit of room for our plug there. And again, make the tab as long as you want to. I gave you um, suggestions on size, but we all know when you're creating, um, you do what you want to do. <laughs> Let's close this up, okay? Stick that long strap inside, which is actually right here, okay? We're going to prepare now to close this up, all right? And by doing that, in order to do that, we're sticking that in. We don't want it hanging outside so it doesn't get um, sewn inside. We want to put pretty side to pretty side. Pretty side to pretty side. And pin or use your clips. Okay, I'm going to stick some pins. in several places. We don't want it shifting. Yeah, everything you want to create, you do it on the inside. If you're using a light color um, lining, you definitely want to flip that over, flip it over and um, cut off your extra threads so that you don't see it through the lining. Because those little pesky buggers, you do see them with light. See this right here? You do see, um, you know, your, your strings, if you're using white lining um, or like a light yellow, okay? I'm not really concerned about it because I'm using a dark gray, but, um, just so that you know, 
okay? And then when you go to iron it, you'll say, oh no, what is that in there? Well, that'll be your loose threads and stragglies. Okay, at this point, we want to sew all the way around. We're going to leave a portion on the side. I'm going to leave this open. So I'll pin here just so that you can see. I'm choosing to go higher than the pocket but lower than the curve okay so this portion here i don't ever like turning things on a curve but the pocket we want to reinforce it so we don't want to turn it down there i'll leave this portion open so so all the way around okay i'm starting right here just above the pocket quarter of an inch all the way around the reason you want to sew at quarter of an inch is because we want to go past that original um, baseline stitch that we did to secure that pocket in place. We want that um, eighth of an inch to be inside of our stitch line here. I'm going around a curve, so I lowered my stitch length and I'm boosting it back up now. You lower your stitches around the curves because it helps you turn easy and it doesn't leave, um, I just don't know how to describe it, indentations <laughs> around the curves. See, look at this. Um, you see this here? I could have done this a little better, but I used um, on the opposite side when I cut, I didn't cut further, but we want to have nice clean edges. And that's a, that's a way to help your edges be clean, smooth. Okay. When you go over your tab, just back, back stitch on it, give it some extra love. Anything that's, that's a strap, you wanna give a little extra love. Okay, I'm back where I need to be. Um, at the opening, just back stitching a bit. Okay. Let's flip this baby right side out and see what we got. <laughs> when I was thinking about this, I had no idea <laughs> how I was doing it. Um, well, no, I had an idea, but I was like, hmm, let me see if this idea works out. <laughs> Okay, clipping those curves. Did I clip? Okay, no. <laughs> Do this on all four sides. I'm gonna go a little closer. Every time I create something, um, I'm constantly learning. So, I don't know, when you guys are watching some other tutorials, I mean, things look perfect, but I'm not afraid to show you guys, like, oops. <sighs> because I'm sure you have a lot of oops, oopses when you're sewing. So, all right. Here we go. Let's turn this baby right side out. I want to get ready. You want to get ready to iron. And so. And grab that chopstick. Your pocket, if when you're turning it around, you'll notice obviously your pocket might come out the wrong way. That's fine. Just flip it. If your pocket comes out like on this side, just flip it. 
okay? Um, I remember a wallet that I did, I think about a year ago, a tutorial on a wallet, and um, I was getting so many messages, people were stuck because the wallet, when they flipped it, that's what would happen. I'm like, no, no, you did right, you did right, you just gotta poke the, poke the pocket through the other side. <laughs> All right, that looks good. I'm happy with it. One little straggly. All right, I'm helping roll this into place, but you know what I'm getting. My chopstick. <laughs> so inside, go into your lining, okay? In between your lining and your, um, and your uh, final fabric good side of your fabric use your chopstick to push those seams out looks so good okay and then we can flatten it out do the same thing around the other edge good you know what i want to hold on i want to make my tab here I just saw something oh okay it looks great it looks good I can see my stitch line so I'm going to put this right back inside I don't want to see the stitch line from where I basted it okay I'm going to make this a little wider there we go. I made my seam line a little wider so I didn't see the base stitch perfect there we go all right okay see I'm glad I looked there's my iron oh right here <laughs> all right we want to iron this down. Going to iron this side. Let's um Fold under the raw edges, tuck them in, and flip this over so I can see on this side. I'm just thinking, when I was using this, um, what's that, Ollie Fun? The Ollie Fun was so much easier to work with than actual fabric, now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'll iron this all in just a moment after I stitch it. Okay, let's go around, because I have to iron it anyway when we're, when we're done with it. We are going to top stitch around the entire outside um, to put a final, um, a final look on it, okay? And then what it's going to do is it's also going to close up outside hole. I have string everywhere. <laughs> Threads everywhere. <laughs> okay. Let's see, here we go. And I'm sewing on 3.0. Thank you. 
want to move your strap so you don't sew over your strap. It's a joke at this point. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hit this with the iron. just so I get it straight for the first time. Okay. Okay. Let's just see before we put our stuff in it. Um. Mm-hmm. There we go. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm going to just stick this here and of course you can you know stick your cords in there stick your plugs the way that we did with this one um and use that pocket play around with it play around with it um you know uh, set it up according to how you want it okay um yeah and just you know you could choose if you wanted to, to use snaps, but the flexibility is being able to fold it as much as you want to, you know, and um, for it to be flexible. <laughs> and so that's all I got for you guys today. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, go ahead, make one. It's pretty simple. <laughs> okay. And, um, let me know if you have any questions, okay? So I'll see you back here for the next video. And uh, yeah, go so. Be creative. Bye, guys. <laughs>